Good morning. I'm glad you could join me today. My name is Marcella, and I'm here to encourage you. This session lasts for 30 minutes. So during that time, um, I'll allow God to give me what to say. And um, the things that I say should encourage you and just help you to think about your life, um, about getting closer to God, about allowing Him to get closer to you and um, just following His lead. So that's what these videos are about. I enjoy doing these really videos. I really do. I wasn't a person that um, would get on the camera. You know, just just wasn't my style. But um, when the Holy Spirit placed it on my heart, and I knew that this was what I was supposed to be doing. So I hope you enjoy this time with me. And um, it'll change your life. Because a relationship with God changes our life. It always changes our life for the better. Sometimes we may think that we're not a good Christian. I heard my my granddaughter told me the other day, she's 13, and she's like um, thinking that she's not a good Christian. And I let her know it's not in what you do that makes you a Christian. It's not in what you do. It's in asking Jesus to come into your heart. So that's what that's all about. Not in what we do because all of us would fail. All of us would fail. God loves us. He loves us. He loves us when we do good. He loves us just the same when we mess up. He loves us when we um, make a mistake and accidentally mess up. And he still loves us when we intentionally mess up. Because sometimes we do that too. He just loves his children. He loves his children. And we have to know that because that's so important. It's so important to know that he really loves us. He has so many wonderful things for us, whether we have been good or whether we have been disobedient. He still has wonderful things in store for us. So the thing that we need to do is gather closer to Him. Gather closer to Him. There were people who followed Jesus in the Bible. They followed him because they knew that he was the one with the answers. So they followed him. And that's what we have to do. We have to follow Jesus, knowing that he is the one with the answers. And by him having the answers, we need to seek him. We need to diligently seek him, as the word says. This is something that we need to do all the time. He knows that we have things that we do throughout the day. He already knows this. But it doesn't stop us from recognizing that he's there. It shouldn't stop us from doing that, being around other people. It shall stop us from being a Christian. We still supposed to let our light shine brightly. So none of those things should stop us. Because if it's that easy for us to take off 
our Christianity, then we need to ask ourselves. We need to ask ourselves, seriously, am I a Christian? Did I ask Jesus to come into my heart and really mean it? So, sometimes we need to ask ourselves that and just rededicate our life unto Him. We don't want to be a stumbling block for someone. Someone may think, um, say like it may be someone that you are friends with and um, you, you all have mentioned church before. So they know that you go to church. They know that you do different things in church. You have um, assignments that you do in church. You have a ministry um, that you do in church. And they see you around other people. And you act differently. That's not a good witness. It's not. We need to stay constant. To stay constant. Um in our beliefs and how our heart convicts us. We need to stay constant because if we don't and we're wishy-washy, people are not going to know where we stand. It's going to be like, are you a Christian or not? Because people watch us. They watch us. Some of them want to be a Christian, but they think it's too hard. They're not understanding. They're not understanding that it's not in how you behave. It really isn't that makes you a Christian. It's your acts and Jesus in your heart. So they're not understanding that. So it's up to us to show them that, hey, you know, I make a mistake. I ask for forgiveness. Regardless of of what it is, whether I'm right or wrong, I may have to go to a person and ask them to forgive me. I had a lady at church. She's no longer there now. But for some reason, she did not like me. You know when when you um, when you try to be friends with people and you know you try to be nice to them and everything and they still don't like you and you don't understand it. You really don't understand because you're thinking I haven't done anything to them. Why don't they like me? But everybody isn't going to like you. And this particular person, she would, she would talk with me and, um, we supposed to make plans to go somewhere. Um, we were supposed to, I think we went out to eat. Yeah, we went out to eat one time, um, at UAPI, UAPI, that pizza place. So, you know, we get there and, um, you know, I was going to pay for her for her meal she got very offended she got very offended so I just left her alone um and um you know we had a good conversation and stuff and she was just saying how how um this person acts and then um she went from there to somebody else saying how that person acts and I'm like I don't think they meant that you know, I just told her, I don't think they meant that. And, um, and she just, I don't know, she just seemed to uh, to have something against um, different people. And um, another time we were supposed to go to Atlanta and um, it was like early in the morning and I'm calling her and she doesn't answer the phone. And I just, I just couldn't understand it. I just couldn't.
So everyone isn't going to like you. They just start. And it's not even you. It's not even you. They see something inside you that you don't even see yet. And they, they, but they can sense it. And, uh, and they don't like it. They, they don't like it. Um, I know, like, on the job, you know, I'm the one that, that is like, okay, you know, they want me to do the job like this, so this is how I'm going to do it. And, um, people who, um, don't like to do their job well, they tend to, they have a tendency to, to not like the person who does their job. That's just how it goes. So they can see something on the inside of you. Maybe they can see leadership skills on the inside of you, and they, they don't like that. So it's not you. It's not you just, you know, keep doing what you do because um, you're to do as the Holy Spirit leads you. So you shouldn't feel guilty um, for doing what you're supposed to do. You know, it's that the other person, you've done what you, you're supposed to do. It's the other person, you know, because I kept trying to befriend this girl. I kept, you know, I just kept trying to befriend her. And um, I had someone in leadership to, t to tell me, just leave it alone. Just leave it alone. Because, I, you know, I felt bad. I felt bad because I knew that she didn't care much for me. And I felt bad about that. Um, she was supposed to bring chicken for our fellowships because we had fellowship dinners, well, lunch and after every Sunday service. And she was supposed to, her and this other girl supposed to bring chicken. And um, when I called her on Saturday and I, she wasn't answering, I knew she wasn't going to bring it. So, you know, it's like... She would do things like that, you know, so they had nothing to do with me. You know, I didn't make her not want to bring the chicken, you know, I mean, um, so uh, you just have to look at it and, um, and say, look, I've tried everything I know to do and I can tell that there is still some tension for some reason, there's still tension there, and you just have to, um, you just have to leave it alone. You just have to leave it alone. Sometimes people have certain spirits that's in them that need to be dealt with, and uh, they don't know how to deal with that. But if they don't allow, if they don't allow that person in, in, which may be a key to them getting delivered from that, then they they just won't be delivered from it. And like I said, it's not it's not our fault that this is going on because we are putting out um, that love towards them. So it's not our fault. So life. We we think life um, is really hard, but it it really isn't. It just us being led by the Holy Spirit, doing what we are supposed to do. You know, if you look at different things, um, sometimes you will see that that um, God can teach you something through something. So sometimes I can look at something, I could look at maybe the children playing um, or something like that, you know, and I would look at it and I'm like, God will start talking to me through what I'm seeing, you know, I mean, it would, it could be something as simple as um, me constantly having to wash 
the children's hand because, you know, you wash their hand after they use the bathroom. You wash their hands um, before they get ready to eat. But by the time they get from that sink, <laughs> they get from the sink to the table, they have to touch it everything possible to touch they have touched each other they have touched some of everything they have to touch the trash can trying to put the paper in instead of stepping on the um the little uh, foot pedal instead of just stepping on that they have to step on that plus close it with their hands and you're like no don't touch it your hands are dirty again <laughs> so it's just so many things that I would look at the children and God would just, just constantly talk to me. So our communication with the Lord is really constant. It's pretty much constant. Um, you can look at, like I say, you can look at different things. You can look at a movie, some type of TV show. I mean, just different things. You can look at it and God would tell you something he would tell you something so if we are alert if we are alert knowing that he does like to communicate with his children just as you want to communicate with yours you know or you want to communicate with your friend it's just like that so he wants to communicate with us all the time so these different things take place and we're in, you know, just let him talk. Let him talk. You're like, wow. You know, I never saw that. And write it down. And that's another thing. Write it down. Write down what he spoke to you on this particular day. Write it down. Write down those different things. Because you're able to go back and you're able to look at it and you can say, wow. God showed me that. He showed me that. You know, um, numbers mean things. So we know that number three is Trinity. We know that number five is grace. Number seven is um, completion. Number eight is new beginnings. And we are, I always say number nine is double grace. Um, so when you see something like 777, that should really make you take notice. And I just started Googling. I started Googling to see what different things mean, even like in a dream, in a dream, because it's something about that state in between when you are deep sleep and when you are awake it's like that in between state um i don't know the name of that but it's like in that state i notice that those dreams will occur it's like i'm trying to stay awake but i'm really really sleepy it's like that in between state and um i notice that i may have a dream and i'll just you know, I'll write it, I'll write it down. So, I mean, God really talks to us a lot. He really does. We just need to pay attention. We need to pay attention. We really do. We need to pay attention. You know, um, different things happen in our life and we can get answers from God. Now another person. But we can get answers from God saying this, that, and the other. And once you get an answer, and this is very important, once you get an answer, you can't share it with everybody. You really can't. When God tells you something, you can't share it with everybody. You know, an idea for something, you can't share it with everybody. And I know that we want to help people in our life that we can share things with. But sometimes that jealousy would kick in. I never forget my friend. She was getting ready to get married. 
And I'm telling you, jealousy just hit me. But see, the thing to remember, our thoughts don't belong to us. They don't belong to us until we accept them. Because the the devil sends arrows at our thoughts. Because if he can if he can get us here, he got us. You know, it starts right here. If he can get us here, he has us. Our heart starts hurting. Our mind works. It says, oh, you have the heart attack. If he can get us here, he has us. So you have to remember that. When those thoughts come, cast those things down and say, no, no, that is not my thought. And you get away from me in the name of Jesus. We have to be bold enough to say this. We don't just let thoughts run through our head like that. Those are not our thoughts. But when we don't cast them down, they take root. And when something takes root, now think about it. When you plant a seed, it's easy to put that seed about the ground. But when that thing takes root, you're thinking about it over and over and over again. That's how people have um, these affairs. That's how people end up um, murdering someone. It starts with the thought. Everything starts with the thought. You don't have to accept that thought as your own. You cast that thing down. Cast it down. So people, when when um, you you tell people something and they say something negative, you tell them about this idea and they tell you how it's not going to work. You tell them how you love the scene and you feel that God is going to lead, going to use you in that that way, and they tell you how you can't sing. These are thoughts. These are thoughts that the enemy is just, just, just hitting you, hitting you with these thoughts, hitting your brain with these thoughts. And what you do, you come back with the word of God. And you say, no, I have the mind of Christ. I am not going to let these thoughts bombard me. I know what God told me. You don't even have to go back and forth with that person. You have to go back and forth with that person. You encourage yourself in the Lord. You encourage yourself. Even if you have to look in the mirror, you encourage yourself and say, no, I know what God told me. I know he said that I was going to be a multi-billionaire. I'm going to stay with that because I know what he said. I know what God said. He said that I was going to be a singer. He said I was going to be on TV. He said that I was going to have my own ministry. He said I was going to be able to, to um, give to people. There have been different times that I have been in the store um, with someone. And, and um, I could see myself picking things up. And not looking at the price. Just picking them up. And that has happened to me like twice. That has happened to me twice. And both times, I didn't have any money. <laughs> so, you have to know who to talk to and who not to talk to. Sometimes we can't share with nobody. Just write it down. And let God tell you what, how he wants to do it. How does he want to do it? And once he does that, just go with that. Go with that. You know, I'm looking to broaden out my t-shirt business because I have been so um, afraid and just so... Um, you know, different designs and things like that. And and um, even just asking people about buying t-shirts. But I noticed that when I do show them my t-shirt, that people buy them. But for some reason, I let their fear come up. And I get, I get where I'm hesitant and everything. 
I'm thinking that I can't do it. Now remember, I said that um, this is a battlefield. It's a battlefield. Your mind is a battlefield. Um, the enemy is going to shoot those darts. So he's going to tell you you're not good enough. He's going to tell you that. Then you have to, you have to be bold enough to say no. No, I'm good at what I do. You, you know, we live in a society that tells us about bragging on ourselves. But you know what? You're not bragging on yourself. You're bragging on what God is doing in you and through you. That's what you're bragging on. Because you're giving him the glory, not yourself. Because you know in yourself you can't do it. But in him you can do all things. Because you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. Let's see what our scripture says. Our scripture is Ephesians, third chapter, 20 and 21st verse. This is the New Living Translation. Now all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him. In the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. This is Ephesians 3rd chapter 20 and 21st verse. New Living Translations. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us us to accomplish infinitely more than we may ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. And I would say, go back, research, research, look up different words with this verse this is a powerful verse look up different words in here and see what they actually mean our 30 minutes is up and i'm going to do the salvation prayer with you so if you've never prayed the salvation prayer before mean it from your heart just repeat after me dear jesus come into my life i'm a sinner in need of a savior. Wash me clean as snow. Purify my heart. I want to be more like you. I know that you came. You died. You was resurrected. Just for me. Thank you. Thank you for your love for me. In Jesus name. Amen. Now that you prayed that prayer. You belong to him and he belongs to you. Hallelujah. So, now whatever you ask him, he'll answer your prayer. Because the only prayer of a sinner that he answers is that of repentance. So now that you're repentant, you belong to him and he belongs to you. I love you much. I pray for you. And have a blessed day. And I'll see you again on tomorrow. Make it a good day. Bye.